Finding Your Piece of the Rock on Think Tech Kauai. I'm your host, Abe Lee. I have been a real estate licensee since 1973. I'm the owner of Century 21 I Properties Hawaii and work with close to 100 wonderful agents in real estate sales. I started ABD seminars in 1980. I have taught over 10,000 students to get their real estate licenses and have taught continuing education to real estate agents to renew their license every two years. Our show is dedicated to helping buyers and sellers understand the process involved in a real estate transaction. Our special guests will talk about legal issues, escrow, title, getting a loan, surveys, home inspections, insurance, contracts, wills and trusts, and much, much more. And today, our special topic is how does Hawaii Home Ownership Center help the first-time buyer prepare to be a homeowner? And we're fortunate to have Reina Miyamoto, who's Executive Director for Hawaii Home Ownership Center, which I affectionately call HHOC. Reina, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you, Abe, for the invitation and for the opportunity to talk about my favorite subject. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay, so Reina, tell us a little bit about your background, your family, where you went to school, your education, and what led you to HHOC. Well, where to start? So I'm born and raised here on Oahu. Um, grew up here. I went to school here, and then I went to college in Boston. And then um, after I graduated, it never was a thought to stay in the mainland. I came back home, and um, primarily my career has been in the nonprofit sector. So um, I started at the YMCA as a youth director, did a few um, different positions over there, including some community development. If you've heard of Weed and Seed, it's yes. a community development initiative. So I spent a few years doing that as well. And um, through that, I actually met someone when it was time for me to look for another job. And she said, hey, the Hawaii Home Ownership Center is looking for a program director. Do you want to apply? And I thought, gosh, I'm a homeowner, which I was super glad about. But I wasn't entirely sure if this was going to be um, the, if I was the right fit for the organization. But um, 17 years later, I'm still here and serving as the executive director. And it's been an amazing opportunity for me to meet such wonderful people in the industry, uh, meet a lot of home buyers. And um, it's really filling my cup in terms of seeing the hope and that comes to through our program for prospective home buyers uh, in the community. Because I definitely feel like if people want to have a home of their own here in Hawaii, I would, wouldn't want them to dismiss it without at least, at least getting educated and finding out what the process is about. And Great. The resources. So now you came to HHOC, but did you know what HHOC did when you were uh, interviewed? I did, and which was why I thought, I don't know if um, I'm the right fit for this organization. Do I have something to contribute to um, mm -hmm. what the mission is about? And I also thought, wow, how come HHOC wasn't here when I was a first time home buyer? I could definitely have used this program myself instead of navigating it on my own. Okay. So you've worked for different executive officers before you became appointed to be the head chief here. <laughs> so what were your different roles at HHOC before you finally were asked to be the executive director? So I'd say that um, the in terms of the title, I've been the program director for a number of years before becoming the executive director. But I would say there's a number of experiences that have happened within that particular role. So um, the program director is responsible for the program of, you know, working with the staff to provide our classes that talks about uh, money management and credit, what you need to know before you actually embark in the purchase process, um, the actual buying process in terms of getting a loan, working with a real estate professional, homeowners insurance and escrow, as well as individual coaching, you know, getting people ready one-on-one, um, -on -one, taking a look at their own personal financial situation and seeing you know, are there first-time buyer programs that could help that particular buyer or the family? Um, even after they become homeowners, is there support that we can provide for them, whether it's in class form or in one-on-one um, -on -one coaching? So uh, that was actually the primary responsibility of mine, but I also have been involved in fundraising for the organization, being connected and accessing resources through our national organization. Um, we're affiliated with NeighborWorks America. And, um, you know, just more administrative operational type of responsibilities before becoming the executive director. Great. And you were well-groomed to be the executive director. <laughs> Definitely had big shoes to fill. Uh, lots of mentoring and um, 
great teachers along the way. I credit Kendall Hirai and Dennis Oshiro as my predecessors and um, my previous supervisors. I've learned so much from them and they continue to be friends of the Hawaii Home Ownership Center and mentors to today. I still can call them. Great. Well, when I first heard about HHOC, I had no idea who they were. And here I was a real estate agent for 50 years or 40 something years back then. So a good friend of mine, Mike Gimanaka, calls me up and says, hey, we need some people to be on the development committee for HHOC. I go, what is HHOC about? And of course, that's when Kendall was the executive director. Then, of course, Dennis took over and then now you. So how, what's the gist of what you do at HHOC? How do you help people? Hmm. So at the core, I would hope, think that we provide hope and help for home ownership. So primarily we help prospective first-time buyers. And I talked a little bit about it, you know, where we provide classes that are about, you know, what you should consider before embarking on the journey, as well as the actual purchase process and who's involved. And then we also provide coaching, which is actually taking the class concepts that they um, learned about and actually Im implementing it or creating an action plan for themselves. So, you know, um, we offer a lifetime membership of services. So anybody that enrolls in our program can use as much or as little as our, uh, that we are of our services that we offer. You know, they could meet with their homeownership coach every month, every quarter, um, once every six months. So they kind of decide what works for them. And um, sometimes it's going to be more frequent in the beginning, maybe a little bit less in the um, in the middle. And then right when they're getting to escrow, meeting with their homeownership coach, coach a little bit more often. Um, and then post-purchase services, you know, it's where we'd like to be there for um, folks, not just to get into homeownership, but we want them to sustain it for the long term. So that's why the post-purchase services are available as well, too. So, um, you know, maybe if I'm a homeowner and I thought, gosh, I think it's, I, I could, I, it's time for me to think about maybe buying a bigger home. My family has grown, but can I actually keep the one I'm living in now and buy another home? Or would I have to leverage the equity in the current home that I own and, you know, use that to, to buy the second home too? You know, the Hawaii Home Ownership Center is a third party that's not actually involved in the actual transaction. So, it's kind of nice to have that resource and an unbiased party to kind of talk me through some of the things I should think about or what might be possible or resources available to me. Now, the cornerstone of at least the education program is a nine hour courses that the people take. Mm -hmm. What's the fee for it? How long is it? And is it on webinar? You have live classes. Do you offer it throughout the whole state? So maybe you can talk a, a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, Actually, I'll talk a little bit more about the lifetime membership first. Mm -hmm. So you asked about the fee. So we do offer that lifetime membership that I talked about, and it's for $60 um, per buying unit. So it's a one-time lifetime membership fee that I pay. If I'm buying by myself, I'll pay $60. And if I'm buying with my other adult brothers and sisters, uh, it's still $60 that covers all of this because we're considered one buying unit. Um the Honolulu Board of Realtors is currently offering some subsidy through their HOPE program. So there's actually um, $50 discounted or subsidized off of that membership fee for anybody referred by a Honolulu Board of Realtors member. Abe, you're one of them. So actually people can mention this, this uh, webinar right now and name you as their referring source since you're talking about it. And um, whoever is listening to this program could name Abe Lee as their referring realtor, and then they could receive $50 off of that lifetime membership fee. So it's a balance of $10 of an investment to that actual buying unit. Um, as far as the classes go, uh, we offer a few, uh, a couple options. So we do offer that nine hour class that you talked about um, by, by Zoom. So it's a live instructor and we offer the classes in segments. So it's not a one, uh, one time shot nine hour course on Zoom, that's a bit much. Um, so it's our, our instructor, Dale, that does primarily most of the classes. Um, the other option is a self-paced option. So we engage with the third-party vendor where you can log on and off of a platform. Um, there's some chapter tests, videos on there. And then after you finish that class, um, in order to get the completion certificate, uh, folks will sign up for a coaching appointment with one of our staff. And the reason why we require that is we want to make sure that anybody that uses that option will have the local information as well to the um, self-paced option doesn't talk about the specifics to like um, property tax exemptions, for example, here in Hawaii. Um, they wouldn't talk about some other localized information that we want people to have. And that particular option is a little bit more expensive. So we pass on the $15, which is a third-party vendor cost. 
Um, the other a la carte price, price uh, the a la carte things that people might sign up for would be like a credit report. We offer a soft credit report pool with FICO scores. So if anybody wants that, then we just pass on the direct costs for whatever it is at that point in time. Okay, that membership is good for life. Yes, forever. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, neighbor island people are signing up more now because of COVID. Because of COVID, but also, I guess the blessing disguise is that having the classes offered by Zoom provides more opportunities for our neighbor islands to participate. Um, when we offered live classes on the neighbor islands, it was basically whenever we had it scheduled. And mm -hmm. if they couldn't make it on that at that time, the self-paced opportunity was the only alternative uh, available to them. But now that anybody from any island, um, even on the mainland, and they, they're planning to buy here, could attend our classes, um, the frequency is more often, and then also in terms of there, it isn't limited to actually having it on island. So that's the reason why I have more participation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little about the course content? I know it's nine hours, but what are your basic blocks of information that you cover? Sure. So um, the first half is about what you consider you should consider before you embark on home ownership. So it's money management and credit in the context of qualifying for financing. That's the first half. The second half is actually about the buying process, getting a mortgage, what's the loan officer's job, a little bit about loan types, um, also about shopping for a home, what's the job of a real estate agent, the purchase contract, a little bit of details related to that. Um, we also talk a little bit about homeowners insurance and the escrow process. So even if somebody only took our classes and nothing else be, um, from us, they would have a good high level overview about what I should think about before I get started all the way to getting my keys. Okay. Now, some of the government sponsored affordable housing programs, do they have a component where they need to be educated in this homeownership program? And then do you give a certificate of completion so they can qualify for those affordable housing units? Mm -hmm. How does that work? So it kind of depends on which government entity is associated with an affordable um, housing project. But for a few of them, um, they would require home buyer education by a HUD approved counseling agency. And we worked with some, a couple of developers because the curriculum had to be special, like it's uh, specially designed for the individual project. So, uh, for example, the Central Ala Moana was one, 801, 803 Waimanu, the block, was another one that required a special class like that. And so we're able to fulfill that um, requirement for the government by working with the government entity, the developer, and a few other entities too. So we had like a uh, guest speaker that was representing the lender. We had somebody come in that was actually going to talk a little bit about um, living in a condo as well as some of the specifics to that condo project as well, too. Okay. Now, I know that I've been in a guest instructor for the real estate portion when you had live classes, which mm -hmm. is great. But you talk about the benefits of home ownership as far as a family is concerned and the children and their education their, I guess, uh, emotional uh, stability, and also about uh, helping with the community. So can you talk a little about why home ownership is so important to the overall general health of the family? Hmm. So before I answer that specific question, I will say that, you know, um, there's no one thing that fits uh, any given family, right? There's a lot of, there's some other, there's different home ownership or housing opportunities for, for folks, right? You had mentioned, you know, sometimes renting is, is appropriate for a particular person, but for those who want home ownership and they're, you know, they're going to be staying in a, staying put for a bit and that, that makes sense for them. Um, I think home ownership can provide a lot of things. I mean, one would be stability. We just talked about that, right? Safe and stable place for you to put down your your things, create family memories. Uh, there's a lot of be benefits in terms of being able to, you know, stay put in a community. Um, while I'm not living with my mom, I we are both homeowners on our own right. I still am pretty tied to the community she lives in as well too. She went to a birthday party for her neighbors, and we know all. I still know most of the neighbors as well too. So that you know that um, community. Uh, it's not just a good feeling type of thing, but neighbors watching out for neighbors. There is, you know, safety. There's a lot of stability there for the actual neighborhood. 
Um, they all take care of their properties because they're invested in their properties as well as the neighborhood itself as well. Um, and there's some wealth building um, aspects to most homeownership opportunities too. So, um, you know, I'd mentioned that for some folks, you might think, oh, I'm, it's time for me to uh, buy a new home because it's, we're outgrowing this one. Sometimes that particular home can be an opportunity for them to sell, earn some equity. They leverage that equity that they're taking out of that property because the home value has appreciated and invested into another property too, or for other, other means too. So there's lots of opportunities that are good for the homeowners immediately, but also for the future generations too, that that equity that I talked about um, could also be used to educate their children, to pay for college, um, fix the home, make sure that they're maintaining their investment as well too. So I could go on and on. <laughs> it's a and thing. That's really good. So I know how many people have you served now with HHOC? I know the numbers change every year, but you serve quite a few people already, haven't you? I would say people have actually enrolled in our program. There's been about 6,000 that has mm -hmm. come through in terms of households that have come through our program. And about half of them that we know of have actually bought a home. And 71% um, of the actual homeowners were considered low income when they enrolled in our program. So I think that says quite a bit in terms of people having the opportunity to purchase a home of their own if they had, they're financially ready for it and have the access to the um, resources that they need to make that possible too. Now, when the interest rates were crazy low, it was easier to qualify. Yeah. But in the last year, since the, or actually almost year and a half now, with the federal government just jacking up the interest rates to the highest point in the last 20 years is what they said. How do people cope with the higher interest rate and still try to afford to buy a house? It can be a uh, very eye-opening and discouraging for a buyer who's actually got qualified at, you know, the low interest rate, say at 3%, and now it's over double that because what you can buy or qualify for now, it's not what it was even a year ago. Um, in terms of coping about that, you know, at the Hawaii Home Ownership Center, it really is about being financially ready, being mortgage ready. So when the opportunity comes up for you to buy that home, that you are ready to do that. Because I've met quite a few people that call up saying like, oh gosh, grandma's house is going to be for sale. I want to buy that home, keep it within the family. But they never did anything to be financially ready for that. So to go back to your question about people coping, it really is um, holding on and persevering and enduring, you know, some of the ups and downs of the, the market that they have to be committed to this goal for themselves. And, you know, nothing is static. You know, we just mentioned that the, the interest rate was uh, something else uh, maybe a year ago. It's going to be something else um, likely in the next few months as well, too. So um, and those purchase opportunities that I just talked about, you know, we have people calling and saying the family home is available. The, you know, the family member is willing to negotiate the price to make sure it's affordable for them. So it really is about hanging on to that dream and, you know, just waiting for the, the right opportunity for them. Okay. Now, if you can address two things that come to mind, one is a down payment assistance program that the federal government has where you pay what just the uh, interest only, I'm sorry, principal only and no interest. And then you get forgiven on the next 10 years or something. And then maybe you can talk about the mortgage credit certificate, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so the, the first program that you talked about, um, it's actually implemented, it's federal money, but it's actually implemented through the city and county of Honolulu. So it's called the down payment um, loan program. So it is a loan and you're right that there's 0% interest um, and they only have to pay back the principal. Um, it's a, up to a $40,000. So it won't cover all of their down payment or their financing needs. So they still need to get a first mortgage, possibly with um, mortgage insurance. This down payment loan will cover 40, up to 40000 at no, no interest. And the borrower needs to come with 5% down payment. Um, in terms of that $40,000 loan, it is 0% interest. And um, for each year that they pay on time and they're still occupying that property, um, there is a credit to their loan balance. So um, essentially in to just abbreviate and make it super simple, after 10 years of occupying the property, paying on time, they could actually have paid off $20,000 of that loan balance and $20,000 of it would be forgiven. So $20,000 
as a gift. But like I said too, they do need to occupy the property. They actually check too. So the bar buyer might need to um, respond to inquiries about, do you still live in the property? And they need to respond to the government to make sure that the loan doesn't get called due. Before That's that. amazing though. You can get mm. 20000 forgiven right? and you only pay principal and no interest. Right. Yeah. I mean, who else can do that, right? Except Nobody's for people that go help. through, and they have to go to an HHOC program of some sort, right? And get a certificate? No? Um, it doesn't actually have to be only us. Of course, yeah. we would like people to come yeah, yeah. to us, but they actually say um, the requirement is a HUD approved counseling agency's okay. home buyer education program, but we're one of those type of agencies. So our okay. home buyer education certificate would count. Great. That, so that talk a little bit about the mortgage credit certificate now, what they call the MCC which is another very interesting program. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll say this too, the, the city and county of Honolulu's program that I just talked about, the buyer will uh, apply for that when they get financing. So they need to make sure that they mention that to their loan officer when they um, apply for financing. The mortgage credit certificate is similar to that needs to be applied for during financing. And um, the buyer would need to check and make sure that the lender is on the participating lender list because there's only a number of, Lenders, there's kind of a long list though. They have a lot of options. Um, but if they wanted to use this program that I'm about to talk about, they need to go with a participating lender. So the mortgage credit certificate program is actually offered through the state, um, our state finance agency, the Hawaii H Housing Development Finance Corporation, HHFDC. I'm going to flip the um, acronym a little bit just now, but HHFDC is their ac acronym. So the mortgage credit certificate program makes it... Um, more of like, it can do a couple of things for the buyer. So essentially it's, um, I'm gonna do like a real high level overview of the program. So as um, homeowners, you can write off your mortgage interest. Um, basically it's taking a portion of that and getting an income tax credit instead. You can still write off the other amount that you're, um, you're not taking as an income tax credit under the MCC program. The benefit of having it as an income tax credit is, is reducing, um, the taxes that you need to basically be taken out in terms of withholding taxes. And that amount that you get, that credit, you can either get it within um, your paycheck. So by adjusting your withholding taxes, you can get that money in your paycheck and help you afford that monthly payment, or you can still get it when you're filing your taxes in a lump sum too. Um, this is the only vehicle that I know of short of having, you know, getting a raise or, you know, working nice. another job that it can actually boost your qualifying amount as well too, so that MCC amount can be used by the loan officer to increase um, the qualifying income, which could also therefore increase the qualifying loan amount that a borrower can qualify for as well. It's a little complicated. So with what Raina said went over your head, <laughs> talk to your accountant. If you go to the HHOC education program, you learn more about this. It's an amazing program. We get a dollar for a dollar tax credit, and then the rest is now a deduction of your income. Nobody else does that except this kind of program. So we only have a few more minutes left, but I know the HHOC doesn't run on fumes and you need money. So tell us some of the fundraising uh, programs that you have that the viewers can participate in. Hmm. Well, direct donations are all, always uh, appreciated. People might send in a check or go to our website, uh, donate online. That's definitely one. Um, we have a few fundraising events. We just had our golf tournament last week. So that's our annual um, fundraiser that we do on the golf course. So we have sponsors that, you know, if either it's a sponsor of the team, T sponsors, a whole bunch of other different opportunities. We also have an annual gala called Flavors of Neighbors. It's currently scheduled for Monday, November 20th. Um, that's also on our website as well. It's like a, a, a big party. We have a sign auction, live auction, live entertainment, food stations, adult beverages, everything. So you can check out the photo gallery if you want to see what that looks like. Um, we also have an annual um, fundraiser. Usually it's, a, it's for individuals that are interested and are invited by someone who's already connected with the Hawaii Home Ownership Center. We call it Welcome Home and it's a fundraising lunch. Um, if you're interested in attending, you might not have been invited already. You can all reach out to us uh, in general on our website, or you can reach out to me specifically. My name is Raina. You can ask for me and um, we can make sure that you have an opportunity to attend. It's really a 
short program, one hour. You can check us out, learn more about our organization and testimonies from our um, participants in our program as well. You know, I wish we had more time for a tearjerker story, Reina. Because <laughs> as many times as Reina come to my real estate school and talked about the HHO, HHOC program, and then Dale Tome has taken over as an education director, uh, Dale doesn't get as emotionally involved as Reina does. But Reina's actually shed a tear on a particular story, and she cries every time she tells the story because it's so heartwarming. So can you just give us a one minute version of what happened with the man with the stamp? Oh my gosh. Uh, so we still, we still offer foreclosure prevention counseling, but the first time we did this um, in the early, like 2008, 2009, um, people are coming in on Christmas Eve to get assistance. And so um, actually, this is actually the day before, day after Thanksgiving, this man comes in and he asks, you know, hey, would you be able to help me fax these documents? His counselor wasn't there. I was there um, with only one other person in the office. They said, sure. Um, and it was basically he needed some documents sent over to his uh, lender. And this is basically what it is. So if he didn't send these documents in, he might not be able to modify his mortgage, which is what he needed to be able to afford the mortgage payment and to be able to stay in the home that he bought with his hard-earned money. He was a hardworking man, single, um, you know, he's very soft-spoken. And while I was getting all the documents ready to be faxed, he told me, you know, I would have mailed these papers instead of coming all the way over here, but I didn't have the postage to send it. And so today, it just like breaks my heart to think that this man did not have enough money for a postage stamp to send these papers that were super important for him to be able to um, keep his home. And I'm, I wasn't planning to cry, but of course, um, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit choked up as um, Abe talked about, because I, I remember his face. I remember what he was wearing. I remember what he looked like. like and I just remembered, gosh, um, I pray to God that this man can keep his home because he's coming over here for help with us. And he was able to. And we've seen him a, a few times after that, too. Thank you. Yeah. Reina, I can't thank you enough <clears throat> for giving us some insight. And let me finish with this story. Because I've been an HHLC supporter on the development committee for I don't know how many years now. Probably about 15 or 16 years or something like that. Okay. And so I love HHLC and the mission it has and about helping people to learn about, you know, home ownership. So I get a guy that texts me and says, hey, I, I took the HHOC class online and he's a techie guy. He says, can you help me? So he got his certificate of completion for the course. And then it says that uh, he can only qualify for $125,000. Family of three plus him and his wife. So we found him something in Waianae. Okay. And six, five, six years later, he calls me up and says, or texts me and says, hey, we can move up now. And I want to buy a house in Kalihi for 700000 He moved up from 125000 to 700000 within that time period. But he thanks HOC for having started this program. So I'm a firm believer that you can get people to be a homeowner. So thank you, Reina. I really appreciate your time and effort. For those of you that want to see this video, please tell your friends. Also, tell your friends about Think Tech Hawaii because they archive all the shows. And if you want to know more about re uh, real estate classes, I'm at www.ableseminars.com. And you can have information on the courses so you can be participating, participating in the real estate program. So anyway, thank you so much, Reina, and have a wonderful week. And thank you so much, viewers, for being with us. Aloha. Mm -hmm.